And out of the corner of my eye, I saw this body flying out of the boat. Thought the prop had hit his head. Get him up on the boat, safety engine cutoff switch, and he reacted and went to grab his phone. In this video, I'm gonna show what happened and explain exactly how it happened. But I'm also gonna show you guys some extra footage that wasn't in the last video. This is my second angle camera. So I zoom in in editing and you can see right here is where he flew out the boat. I had just made a cast. I wasn't paying attention to the other boat, but luckily my dad was. He seen it. That's when he said, what the hell? Man, we were sitting right out there next to him when it happened. He went to take off. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw this body flying out of the boat. You can see the gentleman is walking up to the front of the boat, it looks like. The steering wheel must have lost control and he flew out of the boat right here. Oh my God. I yanked the trolling motor up. Guys, this, this guy just filmed what? Oh! Oh my god! So here you hear me say, oh my god, and that's because the boat had just made its first circle and when it did, his head disappeared from my view and I thought the prop had hit his head. Go, Dad, it went the boat rose over. Go save him! Go save him, Dad! So my dad was worried about the boat making a crazy turn and hitting us, but all I could think about was getting that guy out of the water. I did not want to see that boat run over him. I didn't want to have to live with that image in my head, and I didn't want to see that happen to anybody. And I would want someone to do the same thing if I was in this situation. You're almost there. You're almost there. So here, we get him up on the boat, and he pretty much thinks he's safe. But what I'm thinking about is that boat is uncontrollable right now. It's doing circles. You can see it gets pretty close right here. But it's doing circles, and I know that at any minute, that boat could hit a stump and there's a lot of stumps in this lake and if it does hit a stump it could change direction the steering cable could break anything could happen to change the direction of that boat and it could have come straight for us at any second when he got to our boat i could tell he was physically exhausted if you've ever tried to swim with clothes on you know it's very difficult it's like swimming with a brick tied to your leg a lot of people think if they fall in the water they'll just come out of their clothes but i fell in the water several times fishing and you never think about that when you fall in the water it's not like jumping in a pool, you don't take a breath, it just happens. You're in the water, next thing you know and you're reacting. You don't have time to think, it's unplanned, you just react and your instincts kick in and you do whatever you can to stay from going under the water. That's why you should always wear your life jacket. He didn't have his life jacket on because he was just making a move to his other fishing spot which was only about a football field away. I know I'm guilty of doing this, I'm sure plenty of others are, but I know I won't make that mistake again. If you would help another boater in need like this, please hit that like button and drop a comment down below. So we get him in the boat and we get away from oh his boat. God. And I asked him here if he hit a stump or something because we were actually fishing over there earlier and I had seen a stump that was just under the water and it wasn't marked, about the same area that that happened at. So it's kind of hard to understand what he's saying here. You can see he kind of reaches to my phone in the seat up there. So what he's saying is he left his phone in the seat and whenever he got up, he seen the phone falling and he reacted and went to grab his phone. The prop of a boat turns to the right. So whenever he let go of that steering wheel, the torque of the engine pulled the steering wheel to the right it caused the boat to turn and that's what threw him out. All right, so here I'm calling 911 for the first time. How much gas you got in the boat? Oh, I'm shit. asking him how much gas he's got in the boat and he says it's got a full tank. Okay, let me get Fish and Wildlife on the phone with us so I, we can see if they can get a boat to come and help y'all. So 911 says they have to get a hold of Fish and Game and put me on hold and they were trying to bridge me in and the call got dropped. Okay, hold on just a second. I'm getting fish more on the phone with us so we can both talk to them at the same time. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get somebody. All right. It's in front of the dam. Oh, you're kidding me. We waited probably about 30 minutes and then I called them back because we haven't heard anything from them. So this is the second time I called them. Alright, one one, where's your emergency? Yes, this is, this is uh, Spencer. I just called you about the boat and the man that was overboard. Yes, sir. I've got someone actually coming to help you. Let me get them on the line with us. I've got, um, you've got Decatur County Sheriff's Office and a couple of others coming your way. Let me get them on the line with us. It'll be just one second, sir. Okay. So she put me on hold and then the call actually was dropped again. And then at that time, the state patrol office called me. We have some crazy luck sometimes too. Hello? Hey, sir, how you doing? 
Um, okay. He said, hold on, he's getting somebody else online, I think. Somebody else is calling me now. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I had another gentleman on the other line, I believe. It Was that you? Uh, no, this is actually Officer Thomas with DNR. All right, well, let me merge him in. Hold on. In just conclusion, a Fish and Wildlife said that they were going to get a boat and come out here, but it would be 45 minutes before they got here. And as you can see, the way this boat is doing circles, it has progressively moved more and more towards the bank. So we were thinking it was going to hit this dock that you see right here within probably 20 minutes with the way the wind's blowing. Yeah, I mean, I, I just wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't get around the boat long. Is it wide open? Yeah. Okay. It, it's yeah, either. I would, would kind of just, you know, stay away from it as much as you can because it's something you can, you know, fall in and rope catch you and you know, the corner's going to hit you. All right. All right. We'll, get there about 35 minutes. We'll, we'll see you soon then. So they advised us not to get around the boat and try to intervene, but we knew before they would make it, that boat would be hitting the dock or hitting the bank or hitting something. So that's all the rope we got in that little bit. Yeah. There ain't nothing else in here. There was some long, there was a bunch of twine in here that I had that was like a hundred foot long. Oh, uh, it is, it's in that thing, but I don't think. You cleaned every, you cleaned every. Oh, that, that other compartment's got some stuff in it, little short pieces. No, there was a long piece. I think I took it out. The stuff that we wired through the boat. Yeah, I think I took it out. You think or you know you did? Huh? You think or you know I, you did? I'm not sure. It'd be in that furthest compartment back there. With some quick thinking, we used the only resources we had and we tied some bottles to the only rope we had, which was pretty short. We had some longer paracord in the boat, as you see me looking for earlier, but it had been taken out of the boat. So we dropped the bottles and the rope behind the boat, hoping that the boat would catch the bottles and the rope would get caught in the prop and stop it. But as the boat was doing circles, it was making a wake and it was pushing the bottles further and further away from the boat. You know what we didn't think about is that that rope is gonna be floating probably quicker than what that boat is gonna be moving. All right, I got it. We retrieved the bottles and filled them up with water. So we made a second attempt throwing the bottles in the boat's path, hoping that it would get caught in the prop and stop it before it got ashore. Ooh, I think it just went in between the ropes. It did. Did it? Damn it. it Catch the rope? It, it didn't get it. It looks to me like it went in between them. So right here, the prop hit the rope, but the rope didn't wrap around the prop and it just knocked them off the bottles because we found the bottles later and the bottles did not have the rope attached to it still. Right here, the boat hits a tree that's in the water next to the bank and here's the damage that the tree caused to the boat. This lady was a park ranger for a nearby campground. She had come over to tell us that the sheriff, the paramedics, and the fire department was waiting for us up on the dock. Damn, how come it hadn't idled down? Do what I can't figure out. Your throttle must be adjusted tight. Outboard motors have an adjustment on the forward and reverse lever to control the throttle tension. Most of the time, boaters adjust it so the boat will stay at one speed while you can have both hands on the steering wheel. If it's adjusted loose, you have to have one hand on the throttle and one hand on the steering wheel at all times or the boat will constantly change its speed and likely slow down. So he had the adjustment for the throttle tension tighter. That's why the boat continued to do circles non-stop and never lost its speed. There is a hot foot, which is basically like a car gas pedal, which solves this problem. But they are expensive and most boats don't come with a hot foot. Right here, you can see there's a tree on the left that's in the water sideways. And that prop caught that tree right there. The engine revs up right here and it pulls that tree out. See, it starts to pull it out here and it starts turning. It's turning its direction. So I ran out of the direction that it was pointing towards. Then it made another turn into the bank. So you can see right here, it, it comes up and it beaches itself. We're talking to him about, you know, what does he want to do? Does he want to risk jumping in, in the water to go get it? And eventually it comes close enough in the sand to where we know it's not going to make a crazy turn. And if somebody doesn't jump in the boat and turn that engine off within the next probably one minute, that motor's probably going to overheat and possibly blow up. So he jumps in the boat here, he turns the throttle off, saves the day. Yes, sir. Saves his boat. Finally. And he saved the boat. So here you guys can see that we, we come out and we talk to him after EMS and everybody leaves. We're asking what kind of damage 
uh, was done to the boat and if it was okay. He said the heat alarm never went off for the boat. Here's a picture of the damaged prop. A kill switch lanyard or a safety engine cutoff switch is a switch on the engine that has a lanyard that goes around your arm. In the event, if you are thrown out of the boat, it will pull and it will cut off the engine. I did ask him about a kill switch whenever we got him in the boat. He had just bought this boat and the kill switch wasn't working, but believe me, he has it fixed now after this. So I give him my number in case he has any complications on the way back to the boat ramp, the boat sinks or something like that where he can call us and we can come help him since the DNR still has not shown up. And we actually got to talking and he offered to take me fishing a few days later and he took me to one of his honey holes and we caught a ton of bass. So be on the lookout for that video. I'll have that video of us fishing together uploaded soon, but if you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon, you'll get notified whenever I do upload that video. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you again next time.